Now that we've discussed the overall concept of infrastructure middleware in Android, we'll zoom in on the hardware abstraction layer, or HAL. After watching this part of the lesson, you'll understand the role that the HAL plays in Android system architecture. In particular, the HAL mediates interactions between the operating system kernel layer and higher layers in the Android software stack. Likewise, you'll also know the technical and economic factors that motivated Google and its original equipment manufacturer, or so-called OEM partners, to add a HAL to the Android software stack in the first place. Android apps rarely access the HAL directly, so you don't need to know all the details of how it works, but it is important to understand the role it plays to be a more effective full stack developer in the Android platform. Let's start by giving an overview of the Android hardware abstraction layer. One of the main goals of the HAL is to help separate concerns in the Android systems architecture. This is a common technique that's used in many large scale software development projects in order to be able to isolate key challenges and complexities to certain layers so layers at top can be simplified. As we talked about earlier in our lesson when we discussed the Android application of the layers pattern. In particular, the Android HAL helps to decouple the Android platform software from the hardware, because of course the hardware will keep changing and evolving over time, but we don't wanna to have to have the Android software stack rewritten repeatedly in order to accommodate changes that inevitably occur in the hardware. The goal of all this, of course, is to make sure that the apps don't break when the hardware changes. Another goal of the HAL is to decouple the Android framework layer from the operating system layer. In particular, when you program at the operating system layer or in the operating system layer, you typically have to write your code that uses low-level C function calls, which are tedious and error-prone to use. In contrast, the application frameworks layer of Android is developed in Java. So when various libraries or classes are exposed to the higher layer parts of Android via an object-oriented approach, it's possible to access that via convenient method calls on Java objects, rather than having to use the low-level C system function calls. As a result, application developers can focus on the business logic rather than wrestling with these tedious and error-prone low-level details. Android's hardware abstraction layer defines a set of interfaces that driver modules must implement. As you can see here, there's a number of different parts of these interfaces. There's interfaces that are used to provide an upward facing perspective for how the application framework and apps running in the application framework send requests down to the HAL. And then there's also internal implementations of these interfaces that are used to manage various resources necessary for any given hardware abstraction capability, such as abstracting away from the camera implementations with respect to image buffers and various types of metadata describing things you might take with a camera, pictures and videos and so on. Note that the driver modules do not run in the Android Linux kernel. We'll talk more about that in just a second. In particular, the Android HAL is a user space C and C++ library layer, unlike the device drivers that reside in the Android Linux kernel. And as a result, they're much easier to program. When you program at the operating system kernel level, there's a very small number of APIs written in C that are available to you to access the various device driver capabilities that lurk inside the kernel device driver layer. And these typically include methods or functions rather like open, close, read, write, ioctal, pull, and so on, which don't really give you a very good insight as to what the capability is that you're providing from a programming point of view. Moreover, user space code can't directly access the device drivers in the kernel. So they have to use these system calls, which are, are low level. In contrast, HAL device drivers that are implemented at the user space level provide a much richer set of APIs. So for example, there can be very specific APIs written with Java and Java interfaces that do things like provide various operations to control access to a camera, such as taking a photo or starting a video or pausing a video or stopping a video being able to rewind a video. These are operations that are more domain centric to whatever it is, the capability that's being provided and not wrapped up in these low level device driver capabilities that would be found if you were programming inside the kernel. 
This diagram illustrates some of the many different modules that are provided at the hardware abstraction layer in Android, things for cameras, audio devices, various types of input devices, media players, sensors of various forms, things like uh, radios, digital resource management, digital rights management. Even Android TV can be exposed and interacted with via a HAL driver. A good example that demonstrates how the HAL works is the camera HAL driver, which provides access to higher level applications to the camera hardware. So when an OEM, say Samsung or HTC or whomever, develops an Android camera implementation, they expose that capability up to the camera applications through the HAL and the driver modules. And as you can see in this diagram, there's a number of layers involved. There's a camera API that's this Java interface that has various operations for interacting with a camera from a higher layer perspective. That then interacts with various lower layer capabilities through Java native code or the, the JNI, Java native interface. That itself then goes into the various parts of the camera service and the camera service provides various capabilities to do manipulations to the camera for 2D devices and 3D devices and so on. And then underneath that is the camera hardware abstraction layer itself, the implementations that are developed in user space that actually implement the various operations on the camera. The device driver modules that implement these HAL APIs are linked dynamically into a program or into a service by the Android operating system. And dynamic linking is a very important capability that makes it possible to bring in or to load object code and various other resources on demand as the services are accessed. So they don't actually take up any space until they're actually used. Uh, and this is going to happen when an application first accesses the camera hardware that's encapsulated by the camera HAL API. That's when it's brought into memory. So you don't pay any real cost in terms of runtime overhead until something's actually used. That's an optimization, a just-in-time optimization. Let's talk now a little bit about the motivations for Android's hardware abstraction layer. There are a couple of motivations for using a user space HAL design. One of the motivations is technical. In particular, we want to find a way of shielding the higher layers of Android software stack from the idiosyncrasies of the underlying Linux kernel. Uh, for example, as a, as a couple of cases in point, GNU Linux device drivers typically don't provide consistent support to access certain types of devices, things like cameras, GPS, or the radio devices, which you would find on a mobile platform, but might, might not be found as commonly on Linux's historical focus, which is laptops, desktops, and servers. So therefore, there are certain things that are just not really provided in any consistent way in the operating system kernel level, and the hardware abstraction layer provides a nice way of interacting with those capabilities in a more common way that's specific to Android and its mobile platform uh, services. Therefore, the HAL provides these services so you don't have to write them yourselves in a lower level ad hoc way. There's another motivation, however, perhaps the most important motivation for using a hardware abstraction layer, and that motivation is economic. If you're familiar with GNU Linux and Android's Linux implementation, which is of course a derived work from GNU Linux, and you're probably aware of the fact that kernel device drivers in Linux are released under the so-called GNU General Public License or GPL. And one of the characteristics of a GPL software that uses this license is it requires the OEMs, the manufacturers who use the source code, to provide the source code for their own drivers when they release their code as part of the Linux kernel. So if you write things in the kernel, in the Linux kernel, as device drivers in the Linux kernel, then you are obliged by the licensing requirements to release them in open source format. Well, of course, that causes quite a bit of problem for many Android OEMs who often want to have proprietary drivers that do not have source code access because they compete fiercely with their rivals and don't want to give them a leg up in terms of how they implemented their, their device implementations and, and the firmware and software magic that they provide in order to provide those capabilities to the applications. In other words, they don't want to give out the source code for other people to use or to see. They want to keep it for themselves. 
Therefore, by using a user space hardware abstraction layer rather than a kernel space abstraction layer, there's no requirement for OEMs to actually release the source code for their HAL drivers because those drivers are released under an Apache license, which is much more liberal in allowing whoever releases the code to put a binary only version out rather than requiring them to also release the source code as the GPL does. You can see more information about the Android licenses here at the link at the bottom of this page. There's a number of different licenses in Android. And so it's important to know which one you're dealing with when you're working on any particular layer or layers in the Android software. So that's the end of the part one of our infrastructure middleware discussion, focusing on the Android hardware abstraction layer.